play with you. Shit is crazy. Because, yeah, Jack had hit me about, Jack hit me a couple of months ago about uh, some tickets for his friends and things or some shit, yeah. Because uh, I, cause I guess. For this tour? Yeah, two years, I three years ago. Well, because three years ago he was at my house and I promised him, yeah, that yeah. I would like do this. So I guess I FaceTimed the kid. And this I was, was before home. this before was popping came out. This was five days before it came out, and I looked Jack in his face and was like, "Buckle up." You did? Oh yeah. So did I. Yeah. I you know, you know. So my studio, like Main Street's the first building I built. I literally built it off my back, my mixtape hustle, like everything I had accomplished. And then, you know, when I came back to Atlantic as an AR, my partner with them on the building. He signed, he signed Bird, he signed Uzi. Like, hey, you know, I didn't about the fire. They were like, yo, we don't understand why we're giving this guy all this money. We spent all this money on this building, nothing's coming out of it. Next thing you know, Uzi takes off. Yeah. Craig, I had a meeting with Craig. He like, literally sat me down. I was like, look, Julie wants to fire you. I believe in you. I'm going to do a one year deal. Let you focus on Uzi. Your partners will be in the streets. Let's see what happens. So, Uzi takes off. Main streets is like the go to. I don't know if you've ever been there. I don't know if you've ever been there. So, we become like the go to studio in Atlanta. Like, everything is culture is coming to the building. You know, Doug was working there. Gunner was in there. Uzi, Cardi, played with Cardi, was working there. Cardi B, their own album in there. So, then we went and did the joint venture. With Atlantic, because I, I bet you know, some Canon was over at Def Jam with you. And then, yeah, I love you. And then, like, you know, late my other partner, like, I told Atlantic, like, yo, listen, I'm not a one man band. Like, I got partners. Like, y'all need to give us a joint venture. And I'm like, I'm telling you, you're going to lose my guys. You're going to find me in jobs. It took a little bit of time, but I convinced them. So they did a deal. And we took, we took Jack and our two other artists up. To New York to meet with Julie Kaiser and Craig and I have three artists. Uh, Kaiser was like, "Yo, yeah, I like I like this guy, white boy. I'm, I don't know about that. <laughs> like, I don't know about a white rapper. I'm like, guys, it's not 2000. It's not Eminem's not the only one that existed. Like, watch what I do." And he was like, "Yeah, he's like, I'm gonna be the first one that, that pops, being like, my guy, just like he does with everybody." And literally, you know, Jack was like the only dynamite when yeah. I first met him. So, long story short, we then got them to pay for us to build a new building. So, literally, the mean streets was built off my back. And we went to build Generation Now, respectfully off Boozy's back. We opened the studio in December 2019. I kid you not, Jack went into that room and made three, four records. Great. So, so as soon as we opened that building, that was one of the first records that got made in that building. When did you find him? 2017? Yeah, I knew about Jack for a minute. I, I found him, he had 7,000 followers. Yeah. You know, KY is an um, uh, engineer that does a lot of work. He's from Kentucky. He was working with Jack too. I met Jack, you know, like, he wanted to come into the studio. I like, started talking. We went to all them. I, watch, I watch a lot of movies, I mean, the movies and shit. We started talking movies. I don't know how it came up, but there's this movie called E2 My Tommy Man. And it's a Spanish flick. And long story short, it's about these two got two homeboys and this and this girl and go on this like wild trip. And at the end of the movie, the girl winds up getting the two guys to like fuck and like fuck her and they fuck each other. And then they wind up going on the way never speaking. Jack was so blown away that I DJ drama and Mr. Gangster Grills like knew this movie. It almost sounds like uh, Vicky Cristina Barcelona. Have you ever seen that movie? I've heard of that, but I've never it's, seen it's it. kind of the same shit. You like film? I'm oh yeah, I'm a movie buff. Bro, me too. All I, love, dude. All I love is movies. So yeah, so I remember that time when Jack came to the crib and uh, you know, like we were literally like open the door to him. Oh so, yeah, he was so nice. I didn't realize it was like five days before it was popular. No, literally, yeah, because he he had that day filmed the Miracle Lemonade video. Oh, so that was that was the day he filmed the video. Yeah, and yeah. it was like and so him and Cole were cool. Later, yeah. 
Nicole had been cool for a while. And so that was that was January 2020. Because we shot the video in January 2020. Oh, there it was, yeah, yeah. And then... Yeah, it was before my son was born. It was January 2020. And then, you know, he played that record for Cole, and Cole was like, oh, this is the one I want to do. So that literally, that, Cole doing the video, and then, like, Carl Cherry hit me when the song first came out. Yeah. Like, oh, your boy got one. Because, you know, we would, you know, we as a label, we work on our own. We have our own relationship. So we don't wait on the niggas to, like, go meet with Carl, Max, and Ebro, and, you know, uh, everybody around. So we were we were pitching Jack early on to Carl and playing kind of the music. So when Was Poppy came out, like, it was like, you know, Rap Caviar was very influential. And the fact that Cole did the video was like, it's so funny that it's Rap Caviar cool. is like the new radio. It's the new gangster film. <laughs> it's wild. It is. It's fucking weird. Yeah. It's like it's the new mixtape. I know. Anyway, let me play some dumb shit. But I'm sitting on like six albums. It's fucking insane. Sorry, buddy. Yeah, you good. Uh, this is the joint I sent him today because he hit me up because he hit me so he hit me today and I made the, I did an album in J. two Dilla. days. J Dill up there. Oh, you know. Sure. I got, I got it. That's what I love about you. You're like really from co-op playing game. Like, oh, fuck. Cool. Yeah, Shannon was like, yeah, you're going to love about you. You're the great dude. And you're the only other person I've seen with this motherfucking bag. Oh, this joint? This yeah. is my studio bag. This is my this studio bag. This is my studio bag. This is my beat bag. So I keep my shit to record in here. Literally, look. This is what I made all these songs on the player. Just fucking... I Get the fuck shit. out of here. Oh, shit. I just hook it up to that shit. I, I, I did some of these joints in a Tesla while I was moving. This is how I like go to. The, <laughs> I, this is how I go to the club and I love it. Like DJs be like, damn, where you get down? Like, you know, don't bite my stop. Yeah, I'm the only, I'm only DJ that comes in with a briefcase. This shit's gangster. Cool. Why you ain't have me do this, man? Why you call? Why you call Flex, man? <laughs> wanna, you wanna know? You wanna know why I call it. Flex? Why? Cause, cause I did Tyler. No. <laughs> No, but I will say that was dope because I remember Capri doing Kendrick and then when you yeah. were talking, I was like, wow, this is so cool. Yeah. I always wanted to do have a DJ and at first I remember thinking about having Cannon do it and then he like was busy or something. I don't know what happened. Cannon, I didn't press Cannon's him. Rick Rubin. Yeah, I just hit him. I was just like, you want to do this? He was like, yes, I'm down. I was yeah. like, all right, bet. And then I was like, and then he just, I don't know. I, no, nah, but respectfully, I had just did Tyler, so I get it like. Flex, you know, Flex is another legendary voice. I yeah. think I think what I did with Tyler was a little more leveled up than what Capri did with Kendrick. No, for sure, it's crazy. You know what I'm saying? The, the, the Capri he, thing he was really just so, fun. He really and, made it like a gangster for his mixtape. Yeah, I know. That's why I loved it. The reason I did what I did with um, Flex is because before I even signed my deal, when I was in New York trying to get a record deal, I was try, we would just ride around Long Island with my manager Chris. And we would listen to High I'm from Maryland, so I didn't remember how how much that felt like. Like I've been explaining to people now, like when you would touch down in New York, the first thing you would do is say turn on High 97. Why are you driving into the city? And it would be like moments, like so many like that shit does that's why I still like what Flex does now on the radio and I told him, like even him calling out rappers or how he does it, he's the only person left on the radio that makes moments still. Like it's pretty dope. Doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, he was on the radio talking shit about Def Jam because I was shitting on him. It was it was really really funny, but that's why. Gotcha. So for ten years I had always been like, one day I'm gonna be on Hot 97. One day, one right, day, right, one right. day. And then it was like, I wasn't just on Hot 97. He was like rolling my shit out on the radio, which is so cool. Anyway, he was great. So that's nah, a dope film. I remember first time I went to Flex. I remember that film like. I still gotta do the freestyle. I ain't done. Yeah, you got to. I know. I don't do that shit anymore. So, but I'm gonna do it for him. You should do him and you should do the leakers. And I already did the leakers. Oh, okay. I did the leakers years ago, but I fucking killed that shit. Like, okay. I'm just not, I just don't give a fuck about trying to be like, oh, I'm the fucking best. Like, I don't give a shit about that. Like, if I, I want to, I want to want to do it. Like, what, what do you care about now? Uh, my family and my money. That's all I give a fuck about. But this perception of like, I am. Well, you're rich as shit. But it's not even that. It's like, bro, I am a fucking spitter. Right? Right. Like, I, know, I don't have nothing to prove. So it's like, if I want to do it, I want to do it. And I want to do flex. I'm excited. You know, I don't know when I'm going to do it. But when I do it, I'm going to roll up like Black Thought. It's going to be like 10 minutes. Black Thought? Oh, yeah. So who's who's is, who's is better, Black Thought or Fred the God? Have you seen Fred the Gods? I haven't. You've never seen Fred the Gods? 
Funk Master Flex freestyle. No. Oh, when we're done this, we gotta watch it. Okay. <laughs> Alright, sounds good. It might be better than Thoughts. Nah, really? <laughs> bro, Damn. rest in peace to Fred the God, bro. That is good? Bars for day. We're okay. gonna watch we're right. gonna watch okay. it when we're done. Right, we'll I have to watch this with you. Because you're a real spitter, so you're gonna be like, what the fuck? Okay. So I got you. I got you. I got you. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> Oh yeah, right, I can do it. Let's let's keep. What about the phone? Uh, yeah, I'll turn the phone off. Okay, yeah, I got you. I got you. All right, but we can film a couple. Okay. I'll just let you know. Which yeah, one. yeah, let me know. Yeah, no problem. Um, so, my bad. <laughs> um, so, 